Hello, so welcome to lecture 8. Here also we will talk about certain problems in harmonic loading, certain corollaries of harmonic loading. So, let us first start with a brief recap. So, in the last lecture we have found out the magnification factor because of some harmonic loading acting on a single degree of freedom system. We have also understood about the uh, transient response and the steady state response that happens because of a harmonic loading. So, let us get into the next slide. So, as, as we have seen in the last lecture that if I have a single degree of freedom and if I give a, a force which is a sinusoidal function, we had taken that as k a into cos omega t where omega is equal to uh, where omega is the driving frequency or the forcing frequency. So, we have seen this in the last class. So, this is the forcing frequency. Now, we have also seen that if we plot the response of a single degree of freedom versus time. So, if this is displacement versus time, displacement u versus time, we see that initially there would be some transient response okay, which is going to die down and then eventually we are going to get a constant amplitude sinusoidal response whose frequency is nothing but the driving frequency. So, we so this is called the steady state response that we have talked about in detail in the last class. The frequency with which it vibrates, the oscillation happens is nothing but the driving frequency. This is 2 pi by omega, the forcing frequency. Right? So, this part was the transient response. So, in the so what is happening to the system? The system has a damping force because of the damper attached to the system and an externally applied force F t is always acting on the system. So, in the during the region of steady state response there is this damping force which is taking away the energy and there is this externally applied force which is pumping in the energy. Now, it is very intriguing to see that during the steady state response, the energy dissipated by the damping force is exactly equal to the energy input by the external force and that is why you see a constant amplitude vibration that is happening. So, there is no loss of energy or there is no additional energy that is happening and that is why the response has a con constant amplitude throughout the entire regime of steady state vibration okay, or steady state response. So, it is very nice to actually see the derivation, to see the derivation that the, so, so, so find out what is the expression for input energy because of the externally applied load and what is the expression of the dissipated energy due to the damping load. So, let us first find out the input energy. So, let me try to find out the input energy. E i at the steady state response. So, E i is going to be the work done by the externally applied force and integrated it over the displacement. So, I have to integrate F t which is the externally applied force with 
the work done du and integrated over it. So, since this is a sinusoidal response, since the steady state response is the sinusoidal response, so I do not need to integrate over the entire steady state response, it is ok to integrate over one time period. So, it is ok to integrate over 0 to 2 pi by omega ok. And then du by d t is equal to velocity. So, I can write d u as u dot into d t. So, this integration can actually written by 2 pi by omega f t into u dot into d t. So, let me write down the expression for each of this term. If I write down the expression for each of this term, I can write this as 0 to 2 pi by omega. F t is nothing but k into a into cos omega t. What is u t? u t is the steady state response. So, we have found out u t is nothing but x into cos omega t minus phi. We have also found out the expression for x and phi earlier, but right now let me write this as x and t. So, u dot t is nothing but minus omega into x into sin omega t minus phi. So, if I put this here, I will have minus omega x sin omega t minus phi into t t. this can be written as So, here we are using the trig trigonometric expression for uh, sin a into cos b. So, this is going to be sin a plus b into sin a minus b. So, a minus b is going to be minus b. So, this can further be written as minus omega k a x y 2. If I integrate this, I am going to get minus So, uh, keeping this term, let me just erase this off. So, 
So, if I evaluate this integral, so I am going to have this as plus omega a k by x 2. So, this is 2. So, this is going to go to 0 if I put the uh, limits and this is going to stay with me and that is going to be sin phi by 2 pi by omega. Okay. So, this can actually be written as pi into k into a by x into sin phi. Okay. So, this is the expression of omega that I see. So, if this is the expression that I am left with. So, we always know we have derived in the last class that tan phi is nothing but 2 into zeta pi omega by omega n into by 1 minus omega by omega n whole square this we have derived in the last class. So, tan phi can actually be written as sin phi by cos phi and that is equal to 2 zeta omega by omega n into divided by 1 minus omega by omega n square. Now, if this is the expression of sin, sin phi by cos phi, we can do some manipulation here and we can see that sin phi is nothing but is 2 zeta omega by omega n into h omega. So, you can find it out on your own. So, this is what we can derive from this expression. So, if we plug this value here, I am going to get this as pi k into a into x into 2 zeta omega by omega n into h omega. Now, we have again see that x in a into h omega is nothing but x and that is why h omega is called the magnification factor. Okay. So, I will replace this 2 and write this as pi into k into x square 2 zeta omega by omega n. Okay. So, this is the expression that we get for E i. So, this is the expression for E i. Right. So, let us remember that, that this is the expression for E i and let, let us now try to see what would be the expression for the dissipated energy due to the damping force. So, let me write the dissipated energy due to damping force. E d. So, E d is again going to be the damping force F d into d u. Okay. So, we know that F d is nothing but C into u dot that is the damping force into d u. I can again do the same thing that we I have done in earlier and instead of d u, I can write this as C u dot square into d t, okay, where I it is enough to integrate between over one period and therefore, between to 0 to 2 pi by omega. So, I know that u t is nothing but 
x cos omega t minus phi and u dot t therefore, can be written as minus omega square x into cos omega t minus sorry cos sin u dot sorry sorry for the mistake. So, so let me let me u dot t is going to be minus omega x sin omega t minus phi. So, if I put this here then my E d can actually be written as 0 to 2 pi by omega into c into omega square into x square and then sin square omega t minus phi into d t. So, this can actually be written as c into omega square x square by 2 0 to 2 pi by omega and that is equal to 2 sin square omega t minus phi into d t. So, if I expand this I can write this as c omega square by 2 into x square 0 to 2 pi by omega into 1 minus cos 2 a. So, that is cos 2 omega t minus 2 phi into d t. So, if I evaluate this integral, I am going to get this as c omega square x square by 2 and then this is going to be t and that minus 1 by 2 omega sin 2 omega t minus 2 phi and that is going to be plus and 0 to 2 pi by omega. So, if this is the expression for 2 pi by omega, then I can actually write this. Sorry, this is going to be minus. So, if I if I evaluate this integral, this is going to go to 0 and I will be left with c omega square by 2 into x square into 2 pi by omega. So, that is going to be in place of c I can write this as 2 zeta omega n into m into omega square pi into x square. So, in place of m I can write that as k by omega n square. So, I have another omega here. So, I can write this as m equals to k by omega n square. So, I can write this as 2 zeta omega n into omega k by omega n square into pi into x square. So, omega n cancels with this. So, I am left with 2 pi zeta omega by omega n into k into x. So, this is the expression for E d that is the energy dissipated due to the um, dissipating force that is the damping force. And now, we can see that this is exactly equal to the expression for input energy over one time period and uh, therefore, we can say that the energy dissipated 
due to the damping force is exactly equal to the energy input by the applied force and therefore, we have a steady state response with constant amplitude. So, therefore, this, this, this corollary is a good example to see that also physically that why the input, why we are having a constant amplitude response in a steady state condition, where a single degree of freedom has been excited by a harmonic load. So, let us now get into the next uh, corollary, where we have to find out the response of a single degree of freedom, where the support itself is having a displacement or a motion and the expression for the displacement is given. So, this is a classical example of an earthquake problem, but of course, in a simplified way. So, in earthquake also all the infrastructure that is building or bridges the undergoes an excitation because of ground motion. The support or the foundation itself starts moving when there is an earthquake and as a result the whole superstructure that is lying above the ground starts vibrating. So, this actually describes such a problem in a simplified way. So, I will explain the problem here. So, we have a single degree of freedom system the classical spring mass damper system and the ground is actually having a motion in the upward direction in the same direction as that of the direction of vibration of the mass m and the expression for the vibration of the ground or the displacement of the ground is given as y t which is given as a into cos omega t. So, this is the displacement of the ground. or the ground motion. So, our first job is to find out the equation of motion of the system. So, once we find out the equation of motion, it becomes very easy and we know how to solve this equation of motion and get the response of the system. So, let us first draw the free body diagram. So, if I draw the free body diagram of the mass, let us see what are the forces that acts on the mass. So, this is the free body diagram. I have the mass m which is undergoing a displacement u t in this direction. So, of course, the inertial force m u double dot is going to act on the system and there is going to be a spring force and a damping force. Now, the spring is undergoing a total contraction or expansion of u minus y. So, it is being pulled up as u by the displacement of the mass and it is again being moved in the same direction by the displacement of the ground that is y. So, the net uh, contraction or expansion of the spring is u minus y. So, the spring force is k into u minus y. Similarly, the damping force is u dot minus y dot. So, from the equation a free body diagram, the equation of motion can be written as dynamic equilibrium as m u double dot plus c into u dot minus y dot plus k into u minus y and that is equal to 0. So, this 
can actually be written as m u double dot plus c into u dot plus k into u and that is equal to 0 that is equal to sorry that is equal to c into y dot plus k into y. So, this further can be written as u double dot plus 2 zeta omega n u dot plus omega n square into u is equal to 2 zeta omega n into y dot plus omega n square into y. So, we know the expression of y and y dot. So, we know that y is nothing but a into cos omega t and we know therefore, y dot is equal to minus omega a into sin omega t. Right? So, the entire right hand side is known and we can solve the problem as a problem of single degree of freedom undergoing a harmonic load. So, this y and y dot is always going to give me a harmonic load and we can solve in exactly the same way that we have solved it earlier and the solution is going is given as and the solution for if we if we assume that u t is nothing but if we have assumed that u t is going to be u t is going to be x into cos omega t minus phi as my particular solution and plugged in this solution into this equation and solve for x and phi, then we can see that x is actually obtained as a into 1 plus 2 zeta omega by omega n square of that and then square root of this entire thing into h omega. So, h omega is the classical magnification factor we all know the expression for h omega. So, the so I, I can find out x I can also find out phi I am not giving the expression of phi right now it is it is always better to derive for phi and find out the phase angle. Now, this can also be written in a different way x by a can actually be said to be this and this is called the transmissibility transmissibility factor which is nothing but the ratio of amplitude of vibration of the mass m to the amplitude of the ground motion is called the transmittability factor and for this particular case it is given as 1 plus 2 zeta omega by omega n square square root of that into h omega. Transmissibility factor is an important concept particularly in earthquake engineering where we need to see what is the amplitude of vibration of the superstructure given the amplitude of vibration of the ground motion. So, this problem can also be solved in a different way. So, u minus y can be assumed to be a new variable z and then the equation of motion which was this can actually be written as m into z 
double dot plus y double dot plus c into z dot plus k z is equal to 0. So, this can further be written as m z double dot plus c z dot k z is equal to minus n y double dot. So, this can further be written as which is nothing but a omega square cos omega t. So, now we can solve this expression. So, the right hand side is known which is nothing but a harmonic loading and this we can always assume the solution for z as x into cos omega t minus phi solve for z once z is known we can find u as nothing but y plus z and this way of solving the problem should give us exactly the same answer that we had derived earlier. So, one can try this on their own and see whether we are getting the same answer as before. So, thank you. With this, I end today's lecture. In the next lecture, we will again solve certain problems on harmonic loading and then we will move into other forms of loading. Thank you.